Hello and happy Thanksgiving gamers. This is Jay with GXP and today we are talking about thank yous. It's Thanksgiving here in America and I wanted to thank you all for the growth that you've shown my YouTube channel. Um, right now, as you can see on screen, we're 88 subscribers and in August, we had 27 people. As of today, November, we have 88. That's huge, man. I wanted to thank you. And, and I do have a list of people that uh, I wanted to give a shout out to. We got Tammy Johnson. We got John Michael. We got Tim Ferguson. We got Jan B. We got Scorcher. Uh, we've got Jackie. We've got Alex. We've got Z. Those are just some of the recent uh, individuals that have joined us. And uh, I can't tell you how thankful I am for that. Um, it, it's, it's huge that you guys would even consider joining my channel and watching my content. Um, thank you. Uh, today is not all about Rise of Empires. Today is about um, Thanksgiving and, and sharing because I believe that Rise of Empires is a great game, but there's a lot of great games out there. So there's just a couple that I want to show you real quick. Um, we're going to start with Age of Origins. Um, it's a game that I'm sampling. Um, it's obviously um, uh, fighting zombies. Uh, it's 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 kind of cool. I wouldn't say it's enough to take me away from Rise of Empires, but it's a good sampling of what's out there. Um, it's a city-based uh, build. So basically, you're you're building up your city, you're building up the components of it, you're building up your weapons and your your um, personnel. Um, it does have a map, very similar to what we're used to, Rise of Empires world. Um, you have the ability to go and attack other castles, join alliances, kill monsters, um, gather resources. The, the real difference is for attacking. Um, I'm just gonna quickly show you so when you attack, you, you basically get the chance to set up some defenses. You get some basic technology and weapons and uh, you have to fight off the enemy, which comes at you pretty hard. So these are the zombies and the different monsters. Um, each one of these uh, whether it's a turret, machine gun, laser, or this uh, Tesla coil, it basically is is your tools in stopping them. Once you understand the route that people that the zombies are going through, you know how to better position your uh, defense. This one specifically is six waves of uh, zombies, and they're ultimately trying to get into your uh, research center or your safe zone. And I apologize for the uh, darkness. I have a killer headache today, so I'm trying some low light. Hopefully you can see me okay. And you can upgrade views as you go. All right, so we got the boss. The uh, main hall, which is kind of like your, your castle, uh, you have to upgrade your city walls, you have to upgrade your camp, you have to upgrade your technology. You know, it's, it's very similar to what we're used to as far as gameplay. All right. So let's go ahead and get out of this one real quick. All right. We have King of Avalon. King of Avalon is a similar game and it's a building game. To rise of empires it's got similar game mechanics but its theme is basically king arthur merlin morgana and it's kind of wrapped in with the hobbit meets game of thrones feeling um they're they're basically you're up against ice walkers and you have to kind of retake the land back from them the story starts out with you having to retake this old abandoned uh, castle and rebuild it. Um, it becomes your stronghold and it, it's what 
basically the game mechanics that we're used to in Rise of Empires, it feels very similar, although it looks different. Um, the graphics of inside the castle are, in my opinion, superior. Um, you have to build troops. You have to uh, increase your heroes. The heroes are you know similar in the sense of legendary uh epic you know they they do have different um levels that you can produce them uh, uh get them up to this one is you know renaissance type is freedom you know it gives you different types of heroes uh this one is for gallantry you know so the the game like i said the gameplay is similar but king of avalon is a much better story telling game. Um, it it weaves in character development much better, and whether it's heroes or enemies or just basic story plot, it's a much better experience if you like storytelling games. Um, some of the things like it, you you are getting to know the enemies as well as getting to know your heroes. Um, it's got this nice Frost of Tears campaign where you get to go inside how enemy, like how all of the different enemies were created. And if they're, you know, um, White Walkers or Ice Walkers or, or if basically the unmelted um is an individual they believe that they might be able to bring those individuals back to human so you get to have an enthralled story as you go um let's see what this battle looks like so i need to improve my hero to 30 to get there and my average troop level is two of three so i need to improve before i can go in in this fight um let's go up here and take a look at this this is recommended power of one 0.65 million. I'm at 1.2 million. So I'm not ready for that battle. Uh, what do we got here? I'm not, I haven't unlocked that in the campaign. Uh, so let's go back to the sanctuary. Let's look down here. Um, this sanctuary, the, these, these sanctuary quests are really cool because they give you a chance to learn the story through them. Um, and it's separate from building your castle and it's separate from the map where you and an alliance go and gather resources or battle specific enemies. And I'll get into the map in, in a second. But right now, let's take a look at, at this battle. So you get troops, and those troops have heroes. And this right here is the boss that we're trying to take and destroy. So I'm going to send my troops... to battle this boss. Um, so the gameplay is a little bit more unique in the sense of I'm getting to control each squad. Um, they have heroes assigned to them and those heroes have special special skills. So it's, it's cool. It gives a little bit more control over the battle. Um, it feels a little chunky at times, but you know, you, you kind of get into it once you, figure out how the heroes can do what they do and how to position your troops throughout the, the various areas of the battle. Yep. And I also have the ability to put my dragon into play. So my dragon is going to come through and blast everyone. All right. So all the white walkers are dead or unmelted. They're called unmelted in the game. So this challenge has a two part. That was my first three squads. This is my second three squads. And it looks like we cleared the entire board of enemies. The, as you can see, the, the battle portion is different. It's, it's a lot different than what we're used to in Rise of Empires. 
what the heroes look like. So in each one, you know, you have the ability to uh, increase their skills. Plus, you can get back into their story in greater depth. Um, you have the Lord's Reign, which are challenges. Um, each one of these challenges go to uh, the map ogre. So let's try and attack it. I get to choose the setup that I want to use. Um, for my hero setups, and then it goes and attacks. So this is similar to how we attack castle to castle on the map, but you're attacking monsters, um, marauders, things you can search, searching for barbarian camps and resources. Um, resource management's pretty much the same in the sense of you, how you use resources. They're stored in your backpack. Um, you know, what are specials, benefits, chests, etc. Um, you know, you get daily deals, you get, you know, your seven day login, you get your growth fund, you know, very similar mechanics to any Rise of Empires player. You know, claiming your different rewards. Um, you just gotta get used to the interface. That's really the difference. Um I would say, compared to Rise of Empires, King of Avalon is the one that I'm playing the most out of the ones that I'm testing next to Rise of Empires. But I am committed to Rise of Empires. You know, I'm a year in. I'm in State 685, and I got a C26 castle working on going to C27. I'm in S2 in 764, and I have a great group of people around me. So... You know, I got a lot of investment of time, money, and resources put into Rise of Empires. But I'd say if you're looking for another game, give King of Avalon a chance. So we have the Tides of War, which basically is Jack Sparrow and his different uh, vessels. So, you know, you get the Black Pearl. And you get to build your ships. And you can go on different quests. You know, you have your island, and you have different uh, people you can attack, whether it's monsters or... This is like Homer's Odyssey. It's basically on the sea. It's uh, sea creatures, mermaids, um, pirates. So, you know, you, you have a lot, of, uh, a lot of options as far as, you know, uh, gameplay. You know, and it does have an alliance. Um, Inside your port, you obviously have your fortress. You have your different, um, you know, you have your prison, you have your research, you have your uh, armor, you have your pub, you know, your healer's hut. Um, you have, you know, your gates, you know, people attack you and you get to attack them back. You know, um, very similar, like I said, uh, very similar gameplay. Um, this one, compared to Age of Origins and compared to King of Avalon, this one doesn't quite have the depth of fighting. You don't get to control, you know, your equipment. You don't get to control your uh, um, your troops or your personnel. This one is very similar to how we attack inside of Rise of Empires. You point, click, and go. Um, you know, so basically, you know, you're going to take on mermaids. You're going to pick your ships. And, you know, you, you can create fleets. Like, I have Fleet 3. I have Fleet 2. I have Fleet 1. So I'm just going to send Fleet 1 for a set sail. And they're going to go out and they're going to attack that mermaid. They're going to bring back the swag. You can gather because there's different, you know, there's a silver island, farm island. You know, you get your resources, your inventory. Um, you know, pretty simple to understand once you play Rise of Empires for a while. So those are the three games that I wanted to show you guys. And, um, you know, hopefully for Thanksgiving, uh, you know, a little gift for me is maybe some other gameplays that you might like and enjoy uh, at this point. I'm really committed to Rise of Empires. So uh, let's go take a quick look at, at Rise of Empires in closing. So right now we're in Eden, State 685. We're currently in Eden. 
Um, and this is our season four. So we are, we are figuring out how all of this works. Um, we have a pretty decent lineup of uh, power in our alliance, or I should say our guild. And uh, we've, we are ranking pretty well. So let me kind of show you where um, our alliance is sitting. Right now we are ranking here in third. We've gone over a thousand points. We've taken our first capital six. We are today working on our second capital six. Um, and that is hugely important because if you look at your season rewards in this control two, you have to get over 1200 points and you have to hold two level sixes. So, well, we're almost there. We are, we are within the holding two level six capitals and we are about to hit that 1200 point. Um, and we have plenty of time left. So, cause if we look at reign of chaos, we have 24 days left. So we're doing pretty well in, in our guild this year. And, um, this is what it looks like when you set up on a capital. It's quite impressive. Um, so as you can see, you know, we'll probably need 120 people hitting this thing. Um, the objective is to take a capital um, within, you know, uh, an hour. You, you don't want to take longer than an hour. We prefer half an hour. So that's kind of what we're setting up for. Um, you know, we basically we have banners running. So, you know, if, if it takes us an hour, we're good on banners. Um, but yeah, it takes a lot of firepower. And in order for you to take a level capital six, you need several, several people to have over 7000 loyalty um, that you, you can't even begin to hit it until you have 7000 loyalty. And then it drops to like 5400 loyalty just to even continue to hit it. So that's why you need a lot of power and a lot of loyalty in your guild for you to have success in Eden, uh, especially on these higher level targets. The only higher level target than a capital six is the ancient temple. And the ancient temple requires 8,000 loyalty to even begin to hit it. Uh, so that that's what's important. And, uh, you know, you know, it's it's a great season. Like I said, I'm way invested into um you know, Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire keeps me very busy and I'm still I'm still enjoying the game. I know there's a lot of gripe out there about people not enjoying the game anymore, but I still enjoy it. Um, most of that gripe is coming from people that have played it since, you know, lower levels of servers, you know, um, the 100s, the, you know, the, the pre 100s, the 100s, the 200s in that range. They've done this game so many times. It's it's the same thing over and over again. And really I can understand the burnout. Um, as far as like newer servers, newer game players, they haven't even hit that level. You're just starting to develop your, your troops. You're just starting to develop your heroes. You're just starting to figure out how the gameplay works. You have many seasons. I'd say till season 10 easily, you, you will not kind of feel repetitive because you'll keep getting new heroes. You'll keep getting new themes but you will start to see the the seasonal routine you know um they can modify it a little bit but it's going to be the same over and over again with slight modifications uh but you're in the pursuit for the absolute best hero setup you're in the pursuit for the absolute strongest uh heroes with the strongest legions with the strongest equipment and you know that's a long pursuit so all right guys it's jay with gxp hopefully that was helpful I oh, so much appreciate all of you that have subscribed and all of you that have watched. And I wish you all a very happy and plentiful Thanksgiving. I'm out.